one of the weird things about depression is that when bad things happen to you, it's sometimes kind of a relief. Because it means that you have an excuse to feel the way that you do. Um, not long ago, I had kind of a moment where I thought that one of my rats was literally going to die by the next morning. And I think I talked briefly about it. But she got better. And I actually took this video um, about a week ago. And and she had gone from literally just lying on her side and doing nothing except breathing and that poorly to dragging herself along on basically arthritic limbs that she couldn't really move very well. I was holding food for her and letting her drink water from my fingertips several times a day just so that she wouldn't die. But um, she eventually got to the point a couple days ago where she was just weak but she was wandering around the cage and and when i let her run around on the carpet she would explore and look for stuff and pick things up in her fingers and and hold on to it as she'd eat it and then um one morning she just was a cold stiff corpse and i didn't cry then because i i did the majority of my mourning for her already and kind of accepted that she was going to die and and it's weird to get so worked up over you know a five dollar rat but i'd had her for a couple of years and, and she was just old and feeble and she had a lump uh you know by one of her breasts but it was a small pea-sized lump and it i don't know if if it was a combination of that and old age or whatever but she just died and it's kind of sad because her her cage mate uh, who has an enormous tumor that's that's literally larger than her torso and head um it is is still getting along and it's very fat and very active and just drags along a just this grotesque tumor that so i was convinced that one was going to die first but no the the people in an emaciated one um moved on and so like i said it's it's it makes me sad because i i don't want my pets to die but when depression is as bad as it is and kicks in as badly as it does um it's sort of nice to be able to say hey i have an excuse for feeling this shitty today even though it has nothing to do with it so, so yeah, that was my rat, and I cared about her a lot, and I'm, I'm upset that she's gone. But that's, that's no longer here, that is now there. And I have so many other things I wanted to talk about. Batman Arkham Knight is not going to be fixed until, like, September or August. Um, I, I'd heard about this already, and when I did a, a YouTube search, the first result that popped up was uh, that it's not going to be fixed until the summer. But it is the summer in Australia, because that are, the first result that popped up for me was an article from Kotaku Australia. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, little, little details like that. Um, and so as a result of that, I, I want to see if I can leverage this into um, communicating with, with Warner Brothers Games or Rocksteady or, or someone so that they will stop pulling content ID bullshit on, on my channel when I live stream playing Arkham Knight, which you'll notice I haven't done. I haven't actually done any live streaming in a while, partly because my son was in town and now he's gone and then also just because my depression has been really, really bad and I've had a hard time doing most of anything like getting out of bed or recording. But I figure if I can, you know, talk to someone at Rocksteady saying, hey, I'm playing this on PC and I have a positive experience with this. Um, can you stop 
doing content ID bullshit on my channel so that I can get a little bit of ad revenue. Haha, <laughs> I make almost no ad revenue. But that's beside the point. I Maybe they'll say, yeah, sure. Um, I mean, I think a lot of it is because people are having problems with the 900 series uh, NVIDIA cards and I have a 700. I think I might have said at one point in time I had a 900, but that's I, I had my numbers wrong. So, and, and I, I'm not asking for money or, or consideration just beyond uh, leave me alone. And, and it wouldn't be a lie. I am having fun playing Batman. It's just very difficult to YouTube Batman for me because of the crap that they pull. And that's why also I've been using a lot of, of, of HOTS, uh, Heroes of the Storm video as backing um, because Blizzard is like super fucking cool about it. And, and I appreciate that. And I'm actually having a bizarre amount of fun with the game. Maybe I'll, I'll talk more about my thoughts about uh, uh, MOBAs or Hero Brawlers or whatever the hell they want to call it. Um, so, so, yeah, if, if I can find a contact at Warner Brothers, which is oddly hard to find, I, I'd be happy to get that line of communication started and, and enhancing some type of actual legitimacy that I have. Because um, I obviously can't do it with, with Nintendo games. I mentioned it in my uh, video about Iwata that I can't... I wanted to play... I wanted to have a Nintendo footage for that because I love Nintendo games, but I wasn't going to do it because Nintendo's an asshole about it. Um, and, and oddly, kind of perversely, the... The name of the YouTube channel that's out of uh, the UK is Nintendo 3DS. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, what is it? Uh, Nintendo 3D Suck. Go figure. Um, but I'm I'm sure they'll be fine. You know, people are either going to think that Nintendo sucks or or doesn't. And oddly, they actually might start coming in to think that Nintendo sucks because, again. The upcoming console, the so-called NX, is supposed to have less power, uh, less processing power than the PlayStation 4. Um, and and it, it, I, I hope that this is going to be part of something that Iwata was talking about in, in, in pushing that agenda so that when people look at it and think that the NX is going to suck because it doesn't have any power, so why bother making games for it? Like, everyone from Ubisoft to EA to everyone, uh, especially end users, they're, they're going to be very, very upset. Um, but, you know, the Wii had crap for power. The 3DS has far less processor power than, than the Vita and, and oddly, the Vita is being end of life, whereas the the 3DS hasn't been really. Um, so we'll we'll see where that goes. Uh, what else did I want to talk about? Starbucks is increasing the price of their coffee in Seattle, and I I don't really drink coffee a lot, and a lot of it is because of the grotesque pricing schemes used for it why are people paying three and four dollars for a cup of coffee i i literally remember when they were like when you could get a nickel cup of coffee like like a waterburger you see for any pr promotion back in the, in the 70s and 80s where you, you bought this disgusting looking uh, like shit colored mug that when you brought it in you got coffee for a nickel and it was great i don't actually remember using it to drink coffee, but that's beside the point. Um, but I think it's weird that they're just raising prices in Seattle, and I wonder how much of that is going to be attributed to the um, the increase in wages to $15 an hour that's happening in Seattle. But that's, you know, really only relevant if you li live in Seattle. Something that's a li little bit more gaming relevant, and, and absolutely... Uh, relevant to the internet is an email that I got a while back for 
to preview the, the Chime Sharp or Chime 2 Kickstarter. Chime is like a, nah, I don't want to call it a Tetris clone, but it's a Tetris clone that, that uses music not as a puzzle mechanic, but as uh, for cadence. And, and I really want to say that it's kind, the music is kind of irrelevant to the mechanics of the game. Um, I mean, the, the first one had some stuff from Philip Glass and Moby and Jonathan Colton, of course. Nothing wrong with Jonathan Colton's music, but, uh, I mean, come on, dude. Uh, but, but it didn't really have anything to do with the gameplay. And, but, it, but it's fun. But when I looked at the, the preview of the Chime Sharp Kickstarter page, and it's actually even gone up this way, there was one thing that I noticed in it, th in the first place, and then since going back, I've I've noticed one of the rewards. But the reason why they are asking for Kickstarter money is, quote, it buys me trust, and that makes me really unhappy with the Kickstarter system because if you're coming to Kickstarter for money, then why is why is he having to buy trust from his publisher? That's the same kind of shit that Sony was pulling with Shenmue and that uh, Iga is pulling with Bloodstained. And not saying anything about the games, but just just the methodology. Like, publish the game or don't publish this game. Run a Kickstarter or don't run a Kickstarter, but, but don't... Don't use it to gauge interest. And the other weird thing he says in in the Kickstarter now is, quote, it buys me music. There's a huge list of bands I'd like to see in Chime. Um, but then one of the rewards, and, and he's only got three slots for it, is is if you pledge 1200 bucks, you can put your music in the game. So do you need the Kickstarter to buy the music, or are you using the Kickstarter to pay people or to get people to pay to get their music in the game. And I, I'm... Like, I looked at that, and... And, and like, I, I don't even know what the hell. I, I mean, how... How can you, in good faith, think that that is at all okay to have people pay you 750 pounds to... to get their their music in the game that's that's not cool I, like like at all I, I, and I, I was really disappointed now I, I'm sure the game will be fine but but that's like seriously abusing the Kickstarter system and why the hell couldn't I catch Johanna um yeah, I I, I I can't really articulate that very well. It just makes me think that some that some people's use of Kickstarter is out of control. I think it's a great thing, but but just the way they used it there was not cool. And it does make me think that like I need to start a Patreon page to to pay for my gaming habit because I mean like let's say. Let's say I managed to get like like one or two hundred bucks a month out of Patreon. You know, that'd pay for new games, that would pay for that would pay for Creative Cloud. Um, you know, that would pay for internet and electricity. Well, it wouldn't pay for all of that, but but it would certainly go a long way towards that, but but I'd feel kind of weird about it. I may do it anyway. I, I actually already set up a Patreon account. I just haven't converted it to a... Uh, well, I, I actually did convert it to a creator page, but then but then I flipped it around and turned that off because I just wanted to mess with the tools. Because um, I'm kind of uncomfortable with, with the idea of asking for money for this. Um, but... Um, uh, you know, I, and not to belittle you guys or, or, or say anything like that, but I don't know if there are really a lot uh, enough of you watching this regularly to that I could I could ask you guys what you th think about it. So, and that's part of why why I haven't yet. Uh, maybe when I get more people, I'll look at opening up a Patreon just so I can 
and have some money coming in from this to, you know, upgrade my computer and, and keep things going. Anyway, I really appreciate you guys watching, and please feel free to like and subscribe and such.